<laughs> All right. Well. Oh, hi, Yvonne. Hi. Hi, hi everyone. Good morning. Morning. Oh, <laughs> um, Rodney, how would you like to pick the best sort this morning? Yeah. Gee, I don't even have one. Um. <laughs> Hasn't had a thought in days. It's awful being thoughtless, <laughs> isn't it? Especially when you Yeah. All right. So Harry's not with us. Martin Kennedy was meant to be on board. Martin hasn't surfaced yet. Um, and Carlson, we'll kick off with you. Thought for the day. Would I choose the thought for the day? Is that what you said? No, no, no. Rodney's choosing it. So you need to be very nice to Rodney. Okay. What did you ask me to do? It's your turn. Have to introduce one. Yourself and give oh, my turn. Time. Okay. You know what? I've got one from John Maxwell. It says, live a life that demands a supernatural explanation. Oh, wow. good. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Yvonne? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I've got this wonderful 365-day calendar. I, I wasn't keen on today's. I'm taking July 25. And it's, I love this, actually. Do not wish to be anything but what you are, and try to be that perfectly. Oh, Ooh, that's lovely. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, Charlie Nichols. Ah, good morning, swappers, and any future morning. swappers that could be here this morning. My name is Charlie Nichols, and my thought for the day is happiness is knowing you can go on a Zoom meeting early in the morning and go straight back to bed when it's finished. <laughs> That's age-related, Charlie. Hey? That's yes, I know, and I'm and I'm getting older every minute. So That's let's go. <laughs> Young Jeremy. Yes, I I, um, I actually found a thought yesterday. I was cleaning up, and um, I found one of those thought of the day calendars uh, just lying around, um, just a page torn out of it. And it said, endurance is nobler than strength and patience is nobler than beauty. Right, you're going to be faint on me in the end there. Can you just give, give that again? Endurance is nobler than strength and patience is nobler than beauty. Right. Thank you. Sharon, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a thought for the day? Um. Yes, I didn't. I didn't have one prepared, but uh, I, I'm Sharon Jurd, so I'm speaking today, and I'll be sharing some uh, great value for you. My uh, thought today, uh, which I love this quote, and it's, "He who controls your time controls your income." Oh, yes, yes, true. It's very true. Thank you for that, uh, Miss Rhonda. Good morning. I'm Rhonda Buttery, and my business is involved selling and teaching people how to use astrology software and also providing the best nutritional products on the planet that are made from food and not petrochemicals. And my thought this morning is we can't go back and make a better start, but we can go on and make a better finish. There you are, Susan. Good to see you. Morning, Susan. Justin, Justin, your uh, your microphone's off. She's muted, but doesn't she look good in that outfit? Oh, hey, look, look at this. Look at this. A fashion. In my, in my earrings. Red, white, and blue. Stand up again okay, so I can get a picture of her. Do you want me to do my thought of the day? Yes, please. Stand up first. I was, I was going to do it anyway. Beautiful, is, thank if you. It, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And yes. I think that's extremely appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, what about we hear from you, sir? Oh, look. Where did Jeremy go? You pushed your... Oh, there you go, Jeremy. Um, my thought for the day. Oh. I thought, I thought, Ooh. I thought. Um, <laughs> if it's to be, it's up to me. <laughs> Good old one, that one. Um, Greg Eldred from Executive Business Machines in Melbourne. Uh, we're in the office equipment industry and air. Well, they closed the page and can't find it. 
And my thought for the day is, it's what you learn after you know it all that counts, Charlie. Ah, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed Rod's original thought. <laughs> I can't win. I'm the judge. Sorry. <laughs> all right, on that note, okay. I think everybody yeah. for this morning. So, Rodney, it's over to you for your comments, please. Right. There's some oldies. I, you know, one thing about going to swap, and I've been going to swap for probably well over 30 years, um, you hear a lot of quotes, and a lot of quotes come up um, again and again and again. And some of them are profound. And some of them, if you live by them, it will truly make a difference. And that's why I like Sharon's quote about time and money. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon. Would you like to give us your quote again, please, Sharon? Yeah. He who controls your time controls your income. Yes. Very true. Very true. Very true. Mm. Hey, young Jeremy. Yes, mate. Oh, I've been a speaker, young fella. Well, we were supposed to have Carl Green. Uh, from mm -hmm. good, the good old US um, and he confirmed a couple of weeks ago and he hasn't shown up and I can't get a hold of him this morning. So it's you, is it, Jeremy? Um, so I thought I would nominate one of our lovely US ladies. And... Your girlfriend's from the States. Yeah, yeah. So they're both looking very, very nervous right now. <laughs> They're ducking for cover. And and Susan's already muted herself, so she can't speak. <laughs> so may, maybe Anne would like to give us five minutes and tell us about her amazing life. Oh. What she does to help people. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. Um, it all began with swap. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, when I think about five minutes, what would I say are key things that have happened in my life or that have really formed me? Uh, I mean, I grew up in, uh, I grew up in Minnesota, a very cold country, uh, a part of the country, uh, and left as soon as I finished college. Uh -huh. But it started way back when I was 10 years old. And, you know, I never underestimate a 10 year old who says, this is what I want to do, because I had, I had been inspired by John Kennedy, he was U.S. president and uh, won the presidency in 1960. And I heard him uh, at, when he was inaugurated in 1961 talk about this Peace Corps idea that he had where there would be a groups of, of young people that would go around the world after they finished college and, and you know, make an impact that was a non-military impact, but that was a Peace Corps instead of an, uh, a Marine, you know, a Air Force, Marine, Army, whatever. And I decided at 10 years old, that's what I wanted to do. And so as soon as I finished college, I, uh, I, I went into the Peace Corps and was in Thailand for a couple of years teaching there. And then, you know, I mean, it was the most amazing couple of years that was really so instrumental in my life. And I, then I thought, well, as long as I'm in this part of the world, I'll just go down to Australia and I'll live there for a year or so and, and then get back to the States and settle down. Well, I just fell in love with Australia. And it wasn't long after uh, that was that was in the 70s. That would have been 1975 <laughs> when, when I came to Australia. And it wasn't long after that, probably 77, 76, 77, when I got introduced to SWAP. And that was through uh, actually I I had met David Namchong and he was the one who invited me. You remember David Namchong? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was the one that invited me to swap and I just fell in love with that group of people yeah. and John Nevin and the the things that he had started. Uh, I mean, that was just such a that was such a defining thing to, to be in my in my 20s and to really learn about goal setting, about, you know, even just standing up in front of a bunch of people and saying who I am and what I do. 
And so anyway, my life in, in SWAP was really instrumental in getting into the sales, marketing, advertising. I worked for IBM for, for uh, eight years. And then once I, I started having little kids, uh, I, I left, started my own company. Uh, and so was in consulting and, and training. Uh, I had been a regional training manager for IBM, <coughs> you know, a sales, uh, sales rep and um, marketing manager. But, you know, it, it was, it, it's amazing how something as, you know, set me on this, this journey when I was 10 years old that was going to be international. And then once that international started to say, Australia, yeah, that sounds like a fun place to be for a year or so. I ended up being there for 15 years. And so it's amazing. I just love, I love the way that, you know, things that happen that, that just can be very instrumental in your life. And so um, now, I, I mean, I moved back to the States in 1990. I had these three little kids. Uh, my marriage had broken up. And so it was like, wow, if something happens to me over here, I have no family in this part of the world. And so uh, you know, that uh, it, I'd have these three little tiny kids that were without any any support. And so I moved back to the States, moved back to Phoenix, Arizona, and was there for 29 years. Now I'm up in Colorado. Bible, I, I came up here to go to Karis Bible College. Oh, my goodness. It, that, again, has been instrumental in my life. And now I am actually, my focus is on a business and ministry aimed at single women in their second half of life to really maximize this time. And I must say, in my 70s, I am having more fun and I feel this is the time now to really get going and have this impact uh, and, and be able to help other people in their lives, especially single women who are in that second half of life to really maximize it. So it's a time of just feeling excited about the future. There are ups, there are downs, but we need uh, we need each other. And uh, just like having swaps still be there is very important to me. So it's it just seems like, you know, you're kind of coming full circle and starting another circle. So yeah. that's it. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for one for stepping in at short notice and two a, a fabulous um, a fabulous mm -hmm. shit. Um, I'd just like to say I'm available for dinner on Thursday night if you're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a good chat. <laughs> thank you very much for that. Thank you, uh, young Jeremy. I'm back to you. Back to me again. You're picking on me today. You're all right, all right. Equation, Jeremy. <laughs> All right, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce young Sharon. Sharon is the number one best-selling author of How to Grow Business Faster Than Your Competitor and another book called Extraordinary Women in Franchising. It's all about women today. She's passionate about helping people to grow their business fast by giving the business owners financial freedom and the choice to live the life they desire. Sharon is the director of, of SMJ Coaching Institute and the managing director of her own franchise network, HydraClean, which is the largest worldwide franchise in its field. She's world-renowned for her strategies on business growth, sales and marketing, franchising, coaching, speaking, self-development, and accelerated psychological transformation. How about that? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, You must Jared. be very busy and have six other arms like Vishnu <laughs> underneath that. Underneath you go. Yes, I am. Okay, Sharon, you need to unmute yourself, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, um, for that introduction. I always sit back when someone uh, shares, uh, you know, my bio because it really sometimes actually doesn't sound like me. Uh, you know, I'm like, am I doing all of that stuff? So um, I'm really excited to chat to you guys this morning and talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I could talk for hours. I know I've got a limited time, so um, but I'm I don't get the opportunity to talk about it in a full session. So I'm very excited about it this morning. So um, I'd like to uh, share my screen if that's uh, possible. Is that are you? Uh, am I allowed to do that? Yet? Yes. Just click uh, the green button down yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see if. 
Uh, get the right screen for you guys. Can you see that? Oh no, that's not the right. Is that the right one for you? Yeah, got it. Can you all see that? Give me a nod. Yes, good. Okay. I'm not going to bore you with a whole heap of slides. Uh, I'm not a big slide fan, but I wanted to share some so you could write some notes down and things today. So um, the first uh, thing is I want to share with you the one thing that um, will grow your business and attract clients to you or attract the right people to you, um, which is more importantly, whether you want a certain demographic, you want um, certain uh, high paying clients. Uh, this uh, particular strategy is the one that I have grown every uh, business that I have. Um, so firstly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about myself uh, because I want to give you lots of content and lots of great value this morning. But I'm a country girl. I was brought up uh, in uh, a little town called Singleton in New South Wales in the Hunter Valley. So around the wine country here in Australia. Um, and really um, was, you know, uh, had a great life, had a great mum and dad. I don't have, um, you know, any drama in my family as such. You know, everyone has this big story. I have loving parents, loving sisters and really close family. Um, but my story, without going into the whole story, um, my life took uh, a dramatic turn at the age of 29 when unexpectedly I took uh, a stroke and um, at 29 you don't think about that uh, too much and um, it took me out of my life and my businesses for about 12 to 18 months so I couldn't talk couldn't walk couldn't look after myself couldn't look after my two small children and it really um, got me to think about things differently um, as a 29 year old uh, and I wanted to make sure that I could build a life and businesses so I didn't have to be there every day that I could be taken out <clears throat> for 12 months or 18 months and they would grow and thrive and survive without me and during the time of recovery I really put systems and processes in place um, to allow that to happen. And that's based around my book and what I've achieved so far and how I teach others, excuse me, <clears throat> teach others now around the world how they can have multiple businesses or quite large businesses and not be doing all-nighters, not be, you know, uh, stressed, uh, you know, uh, working seven days a week. In fact, people say to me, how do you get it all done, Sharon? Um, and I say I'm very disciplined in my systems. I believe people run the systems, systems run the business. So I'm always looking at my systems within my companies and my businesses. So since then, um, you know, going from a place where I was told I would never speak again, I would never own my businesses, I wouldn't be able to look after my children, I really changed up how I was thinking and how I was behaving uh, to grow, to be able to grow successful businesses and have a great life. So where I'm at now um, is um, I own nine companies. Um, I'm in 47 countries around the world, um, six-figure earner, and I have over 2,000 people working underneath my brands. Now, I'm sharing this with you to say that, you know, to to show you that it is possible as a person to be able to do um, bigger things, yeah? So I hear a lot of people say you can only own one business, um, you need to be focused on that, you need to have one purpose in life, you need to have um, one of everything. And I don't sit in that space. And I can run nine companies and manage them um, and have them to be successful. 
and I can still stop at 4.30 every day and watch Bold and Beautiful, which is my favourite show. So if anybody knows that show, um, you know, I uh, I don't miss it every day. So um, I want to share, and that's what I'm going to share with you, how you can achieve this and do this if you haven't already. Here's just a little bit about me. I am the uh, author of uh, two uh, international best-selling books. Um, so the first book went international bestseller prior to print. Um, I own a number of companies, as I said, and I speak internationally all around the world. Um, and uh, and I love what I do. I was just saying before we came on that travel is a big part of my life. So I like to travel around the world and incorporate that with my business. Um, and, and that's why I love getting up every day. The reason that I get up every day uh, is, uh, yes, early morning. Uh, I'm an early morning person. So, Charlie, I don't need to go back to bed until later this afternoon, right? <laughs> um, so I get up every day going, whose life can I change today? Uh, and then I go to bed at night going, whose life did I change today? And if I do that every day and change somebody's life, even if it's just a smile uh, and make them feel good, then I'm a happy girl at the end of the day. So let's talk about what I came here to talk about was strategic alliances. Now, this is the one way, I think the best way to grow your business um, and attract clients to you. So why do we um, have strategic alliances? Why do we use them in our business? Well, it's really easy. It's fun. It's easy. It's quick. And it's profitable. So I like to have fun in my business. I like to do the things that I like to do. And I know that there's always things in business and life that you don't want to do and you have to do them. Uh, but I like to spend most of my time doing something that's fun, easy, and you get really quick results around um, utilizing strategic alliances. So what are strategic alliances? So they are other people who work with the same community um, that you would like to work with. Yeah, uh, and so we uh, go out when we network, uh, when we uh, you know, meet other people. Uh, we don't go out looking for um, one person to be a client. We go out and look for the person who has the community that we want to work with. So in my HydroClean uh, business, we um, we don't go out and look for somebody who owns an air conditioner. So we clean air conditioners. So we don't go out and look for somebody who owns an air conditioner. We go out and look for people who are um, have the community. So on-site managers or hotel uh, managers or schools or aged care. So we look for that person who owns or manages these facilities so uh, you, uh, they have many air conditioners, yeah? And then uh, we look for people and having a strategic alliance um, relationship is that their clients will pay you um, the optimum amount of money. And so there's not a lot of negotiation or browbeating you down or trying to drag your price down because of that referral or that alliance then people will uh, accept that you are of value from the person that they know so if I came in and um, you know in to uh, say Jeremy's community and then Jeremy says Sharon is amazing then his community will believe that because they know like and trust Jeremy yeah and strategic alliances um, is a place where and I'll, I'll give you some steps how how to put this in place uh, but what I uh, wanted to share with you is that there, there well, there's two people in this world there's givers and takers yeah, and I want to live in the world of giving. So when um, I'm forming a relationship with a strategic alliance, I always come from a giving place. I never want to come in from a take uh, perspective. Uh, and so I 
um, you know, uh, meet up with my strategic alliances, whether it's online or in person, and I um, come from a giving place. What can I give to their community? What can I give to my strategic alliances? How can I contribute? How can I help? And um, I and even if I never get any work or any clients from that strategic alliance, that's not a concern to me because it's not linear. So I don't go there going, well, I'll give if you if you give me. I don't give without any expectation. And when I took that on board of going, when I give, I do not expect anything in return. It's a ma- it was a major step in my um, uh, you know my life growth. Because sometimes we'll say, oh, we gave them, we didn't even get a thank you. Well, as soon as you say that, you have an expectation that they're going to have to give you something in return. Oh, I smiled, but they didn't smile back. Well, then there's an expectation you're wanting something in return. So I really playful out with that where I go, I'm going to give with absolutely no expectation. I don't know if anyone lives by that. Has anyone tried to play or do that or uh, tried to play full out with that? With absolutely no expectation. You can put it, I can see the chat box, so you can put it in the chat box as well. So, um, you know, because it's, it can be challenging sometimes when you smile and someone doesn't smile back or you give them something and they don't say thank you because we're brought up with you must say thank you, you have manners. But from a giving place, Um, to absolutely have no expectation is pretty powerful, yeah. Um, So when we're talking about strategic alliances, we want to make sure that we don't give with that expectation. Come from a giving place, um, see how you can help them or their community, and then um, I believe the universe will then give you, whether it's from them or other people or other things or other places, you will get. And so a lot of times I get uh, people say to me, um, Sharon, you give too much. And I'm like, I live an amazing life. Like, it's perfect for me. You know, I, um, I travel, I get to speak, I get to share, I get to help people change people's lives. And so I continue to give, yeah, because I know that the universe will deliver me in some way. And uh, I had a, a, a guy in my master coach program the other week. He goes, every time I get on a call with you, Sharon, you're giving us more and giving us more and giving us more. And I'm like, yes, that's where I sit. And I know that everything else will be looked after. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of steps on how you can introduce strategic alliances into your uh, world. Now, uh, some people say, oh, aren't they referrals? Aren't they, you know, affiliates? No, no, there's a difference. These are strategic. This is, um, you know, referrals or a street, uh, um, uh, affiliates. We send a link out and, um, you know, we're asking them to give us something. Yeah, this is from a, a giving point of view. So step one, we have to identify who these people would be. Who are they? Who are they around us? So I always say that in a business, in any business, there should be a list of about 30 or 40. And I say 30 or 40, why I'm not exact is people will come on and drop off because people sell their businesses, move on, um, have a change of values. And so you may have worked with someone previously, but uh, no longer want to work uh, with that person. And that's okay. And so I carry this list with me. It's typed up and I carry it in my briefcase. Um, And what I do is I... um, I call them and talk to them on a regular basis, yeah? So I categorize them. Some of my coaches categorize them. I don't. I just have the list. But some of them put them, you know, in accountants, financial planners, you know, bookkeepers, depending on uh, who it is for your business. Um, So they'll have three or four in each category. I don't categorize them. I just have the list. And when I look at the list, people will just pop out at me. I, you know, I know. So you do have some referral there. So if you have a client who says, I need a good accountant, you go, I know one, and you can refer them on. But the strategic alliance is about, so um, building those real long-term relationships with people. Yeah. This is not about, 
uh, you know, just knowing them in business is, is they become your friends. You know, they might start out, you know, as a strategic alliance, but they become your friends. They become your confidants. They can't become a support network for you in uh, your life and business. So first we identify who who we want, who are working with those communities. From For me, I work with a lot of, um, you know, uh, upper management in larger businesses, so financial planners, um, accountants are a good strategic alliance for me. So think about who, and sometimes they're people you already know, and then other times they're people that you need to go and approach and, um, and, and meet with. So you build your list. So you, um, you know, you chat to people, uh, you know, you find out what they're doing, who they look after, uh, and then you get your 30 or 40. Now, this is not spamming them with emails. I, I, I mean, my strategic alliances are on my email list, but I, it's not, that's not where I contact them, Yeah. You know? Uh, and then thirdly, what we want to do is nurture these relationships. How can you contribute to these people um, in a way that it would be of value to them? How can you serve them? And um, so I look at my list. I, you know, I make a lot of phone calls in my car. I have hands free and do it quite legally here. It's a thousand dollars in in Queensland if you touch your phone. Um, I don't know what it is in, in other states. But when I'm in the car, or um, I have allocated time in my ideal week where I spend time with these people. I call them up. How are you going? How can I help? How can I contribute? Um, what's going on in your world? By having that conversation, you get to know because you know people. You go, oh, how are you? People go, yeah, I'm fine. Um, we don't want the I'm fine. You know, what's really going on in your world and how can I contribute to that and how can I help you? You know, because um, I believe that nobody can do business alone. I believe everybody needs somebody, yeah? And so um, I want to make sure that, you know, um, I'm there if they need me and come from that giving place. I look at the list, whoever jumps out at me. So some people I call monthly, some people I call six monthly, some people I, I call 12 monthly because that's all they need from me. So everybody's different, you know. Um, and so sometimes it's a five-minute call, sometimes it's a 30-minute call. And so you get to know these people and what they need um, from you. And then, um, uh, then that uh, continues to grow as you nurture this relationship in a way that you will find opportunities. You may do business together. You might do joint ventures together. They may refer you to the clients that you need. And as I said, it's not a direct linear um, uh, uh, transference of energy, but most of the time uh, over a period of time, you will find a connection in some way. And sometimes at first you don't know. So I met with a lady, um, I met her, she was holding a conference, I was her speaker, we continued to talk, I nurtured, she became a strategic alliance, I nurtured that relationship, and then we ended up going into business together and uh, doing some amazing things across the US uh, and Australia. Um, but that, that was about two years later, the timing wasn't right when we first met, I was just a speaker at her events, and then um, we uh, moved forward when the time was right for both of us. Um, so I, I haven't, I, I know I'm conscious of time. Um, so this is my second last slide. I wanted to share with you this lady, um, Dee Scown. Now she wrote the book, A Grand Plan uh, Shattered, and she um, became an international bestseller as well. She lives in a country town in uh, South Australia. And she came to me and she was one of those friends who every time you saw them, they wanted to sell to you. You know, when you go to the barbecue, you go, oh, my God, if I go there one more time and they offer me her product, I've bought the product, I don't like it, um, you know, but I'm buying it because I'm a friend. She was one of those uh, ladies, and she doesn't mind me sharing that. I'm not talking out of school because she admits that's who she was. And. And even when I first met her on a phone call, she was trying, she was going, my product would be amazing for you, Sharon. She didn't even know me, ask me any questions. She was just so passionate about a product. She wanted to sell it to me. And so we implemented um, strategic, she started coaching with me. Uh, we implemented strategic alliances as the basis of her um, business. 
And uh, now she's earning seven figures speaking all around the world and uh, doing some amazing things. But what I wanted to share with you is this little story is that I said to her, who in town is a strategic alliance for you? She's in a town of uh, 600 people. She, she said it's 600 now. I think it was 300 at the time. But anyway, we... Uh, and she said, there's this lady who owns this dress shop. You know, she has uh, women come in there all the time and I want to work with women. I said, do you know her? She said, not really. I say hi and that's about it. Um, so we got the dialogues and the strategies around how can she, um, you know, uh, give to this lady. And she said, well, they're ripping up the main street. You know how when, I mean, we've had the light rail here, when they rip up the main street, and everything is, you know, cordoned off and pedestrians have to walk, you know, uh, have their hiking boots on to get to the shop front. So I said, call her up and ask her, you know, what can you do for her? How can you help her? How can you contribute? And we got, we brainstormed some ideas on how she could. She called this lady up, not knowing her very well, said, how can I help you? And um, she said, I'm fine, you know, you know, times are tough, yeah, because some people can't get here. And she said, well, how about... I put a shout out on social media telling everybody that you're open and there's access. And she said, well, that would be amazing. And she said, well, how about I, um, if you want to, if uh, people can't get in, but they want to order from you, um, you can put the deliveries at my house and they can come and pick it up from my house rather than have to go into the main street. Would that be helpful? Yes. So there was a few things that they discussed and they did these things for her. Now, how much did that cost D to do just by opening up her home to collect you know parcels and putting a shout out shout out on Facebook how much zero right it didn't cost her anything it just a bit of time to put a post up yeah how many people do you think came and got their parcels from D it was zero it was zero because it was the offer but no one actually took the lady up on the offer, but the offer was there. The value was in D offering that up, not how many people she, you know, took to her home. So uh, that was the conversation. So D helped her out and she said to D, nobody, nobody has called me up and asked me these questions or offered this type of support, yeah? People will say, oh, if there's anything you need, let me know. And they never reach people naturally then don't call up and go yeah I need some stuff you know they never uh just naturally do that so uh Dee did that that was the end of the conversation and a few months later Dee was holding an event she didn't talk about this event to this lady Dee decided that she'd hire a room up to 20 people um and to share some great uh learnings with them uh this lady from the store calls uh, Dee up and said, and it's in a small town, and Dee said, uh, and she said to Dee, you're, I see you're holding an event. Do you mind if I come along and bring some friends? And Dee said, I'm sure, sure, sure. Yeah, great. Um, how many people do you think she brought along to Dee's event? 40. 40 people. Now, Dee had a room for less than 20 people. <laughs> Great problem to have, right? But we didn't ask her to bring people, didn't come from a taking place, just went as a giving place, yeah? Um, and this lady brought, so Dee had 56 or seven people there, um, uh, you know, had a great event, um, and they've now become friends and do a lot of things um, in a supporting way, yeah? So if, where, if, Dee had called her up and go, you've got friends, I've got an event, come to my event, take, 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 take. She probably, I know for sure, wouldn't have got that result, yeah? So Dee, this is Dee's testimonial to me. She um, tr attracts clients. She's no longer selling. I still don't know what the product she is selling, but she's sold more product than she ever has ever before around the world because she's no longer talking about her product. She's going out there and helping people. I do this strategy. Everyone that in my world uses this strategy. I spend 80% of my week um, contacting my strategic alliances and building those relationships. So I hope this um, has been uh, a value for you. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to take questions. Um, 
but implement this into your business. Make it a priority in your business and life. Um, come from a giving place and really go out there and um, give, 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 because you will get, 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 get. Thank you, guys. I have a question. Yes. Sharon, uh, Sharon, what now how how did you get into so many businesses and what what kind of businesses are they? Yeah, it grew. I didn't go out aiming to to, you know, own a lot of businesses, but you sort of flex your muscle, you know, like when you go to the gym, you lift 10 kilos and then it's 20 and 30 and 40 and so forth. So um, it just gradually grew for me. Um, yeah, so I um, they just present to me at the right time, at the right place. So you know, to give you an example, I have um, HydroClean but I also own a company called SACE, which is specialized air conditioning equipment, which is in direct competition to HydroClean because HydroClean is a franchise licensing model. Um, and people would come to us and say, I don't want to buy a license or a franchise. I just want the machine and the bag and the equipment. So we designed it's a very good machine, but it's inferior to HydroClean. And now we sell those direct machines worldwide to people who do not want to buy a franchise or a license. So I giggle sometimes because people, you know, in their arrogance, call me up and go, no, oh, you're too expensive talking about HydroClean. You're too expensive. I'm going to go and buy from your competitor. I'm going to buy a SACE machine. I'm like, okay. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> SACE. <laughs> Yes. So, um, so that business, you know, we saw this place in the market where we were going to lose to a competitor one day. No one has ever come close to building a machine, um, you know, close to us, but we saw this gap. So we, um, we closed that gap. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know how I ended up here. <laughs> And how did you get into the into the coaching business? Are you usually coaching your franchisees or? Ah, good question. I never coach my franchise partners. I initially thought I would be, but they see me as the franchisor. And really that change of hat, not difficult for me, but is challenging for them. So I always hire external coaches into the HydroClean, uh, particularly Australia. Um, I do coach them as, you know, we, I run forums and events and things, but that one-on-one -on -one coaching um, just doesn't work with the, with the HydroClean brand. Um, yeah, I have SMJ Coaching Institute. Uh, so I coach coaches. So people who are in the coaching world come in uh, to my programs. And, uh, and so that's a little, a little niche there uh, that I enjoy because people were saying to me, I want to do what you do. I was speaking from stage um and and coaching so they um wanted to learn from me and that developed uh from there but how I got into coaching I had a business coach uh his name is Marcus uh back in 2004 so I had my business in 2004 it was very shortly after I had my first business coach and um I was in real estate and I just saw I went to a breakfast saw the opportunity didn't meet Marcus just uh met the I put someone in the brand and they said oh Marcus would be a great coach for you I said what does he know about real estate they said nothing and I said well I don't want him and they said no that's good because he's going to ask you great questions right mm -hmm. um and so he was my coach for seven years um he took me through real estate selling my two offices um having a, a, a hiatus finding myself singing kumbaya on the beach uh, and then uh, HydroClean uh, and uh, into SMJ. And now he's a part of my program. So I coach him now and I'm because I'm a master trainer in um, hypnosis, timeline therapy and NLP with the American board. And, uh, and so uh, I'm his practitioner in hypnosis and timeline therapy. And so it's weird, really weird <laughs> to, to be his coach now. <laughs> Great question. Thanks, Anne. You're muted, Rod. 
I Greg, said, you're uh, muted. Yeah. No, I said, who coaches the coaches? Yeah, other coaches. Yes. Yeah. So, um, like, that's why the coaches come to me because they walk the talk. They say, well, I'm going out saying to people that you need a coach. And, and I, my belief is everybody needs a coach. And so um, uh, they're saying that. So, therefore, uh, they feel they must have a coach. And uh, so they come to me. Yeah, I have coaches in different areas of my business. So I have I have a lot of coaches. So I don't have a. Uh, I do, but I don't tend to have a coach overall. I have a coach for this where I want to in the areas that I want to grow when they come into my life. Um, like I have a hypnosis coach, so I just go to Callum for hypnosis. You know, I have um, a nutritional coach, and I go to her. Her name is Sharon. I go to her about my nutrition. You know. Um, and so I engage people where I want to grow myself and my businesses, yeah. Mm. And can I ask another one? How, what, what kind of systems are you putting in place, especially with so many businesses that are quite diverse, you know, like the franchising versus coaching versus, you know, the direct sales of machines and things like that. What kind of systems do you utilize? Um, I use what I call tick sheets. So everything we do has a tick sheet. Um, so every time someone in my team does something, they're following a tick sheet. They never do it from memory. They never do it ad hoc. Um, and so there is a tick sheet when a franchise partner comes on, when, um, you know, we want to run a forum, when we run events. So just to give you an example, in my events, um, part of my business, there's a tick sheet for, you know, before, during and after. So we have three sections of tick sheets and every step that we do. Uh, when I travel internationally, every step I do, uh, you know, um, you know, go get my hair done, go get my nails done. You know, everything is in the tick sheet. So we cover off on all everything. So we don't have to remember. If I said to you, name the seven dwarves, we normally get five or six. <laughs> Sometimes people get three, right? So I haven't come across someone that can name all seven off the cuff, you know. And so that's where if, you, if you're if you not following the systems, things will get missed. Um, nothing gets missed in my business. And I can move people to different roles. So if someone's on holidays or leave or leaves, they can move and there's very limited training required, very limited training. I go, here's where the tick sheet lives and then they just find the tick sheet as soon as they want to do something we have a weekend shutdown john my husband says there's a tick sheet to go to the toilet there's not but i think there should be one for you know uh some genders <laughs> so um but everything else there is right uh you know we have a weekend shutdown um Us men don't need a tick sheet we got a head uh, is that right? <laughs> hey guys we just we just do stuff yeah so it's always people, yeah, people run the system, systems run the business. It's very freeing. It sounds like it's very like constraining. It's not. It's very freeing because they just, the productivity increases. Um, you know, uh, people say to me, you know, because I run with a very slim team of people um, and people ask me why. And I said, well, they're just running the systems. Um, they, they are thinkers. They'll always come and say, we need to change this system up. This is no longer working. And can we make this better? We're always, that those systems aren't in concrete. They're always changing all the time. Yeah. Any other questions? Greg, you're on mute. Greg, you're muted. <laughs> well. Not reading the messages either. <laughs> uh, if I could ask Yvonne to say a few words, please. Yes, yes. I, I, have to go as well. I was on mute. I have to go, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I, loved, I loved it all. Um, and thank you so much for sharing, you know, like your story and you shared it so succinctly so and beautifully. And um, these, you know, D, a protege really isn't it day's story for you um and i just think you know your tick sheets your systems and you know there's um a classic 
saying in giving you receive and you have so exemplified that uh in everything and i just um i just say thank you so much uh for sharing with us all and because it's recorded other people will be able to to listen and 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 learn um so yeah just blown away thank you sharon oh yeah. thank you Yvonne, for those kind of words Lovely. thank you um my thank pleasure you. very well said thank you very much um mr jeremy uh can we know who we've got next month me again all right uh, next... volume up this time yeah <laughs> next month we have keith shaw as our five minute speaker and eric swanson and we've got a surprise guest as a backup in case one of those guys doesn't show. Good man. Thank you very much, Jimmy. You're doing a good job in the background there. Um, okay, we're coming to closing time, but uh, that doesn't mean you all have to disappear. You can stay online and chat. Um, I'm going to, where's the old fella going? Where's Charlie? He's disappeared. Gone to bed, I think. He yeah, back soon, as soon as Sharon finished, he was like, I've got to go and change my business. And he rushed off. <laughs> What am I going to do with that? breakfast and then he was back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the, old, the old fossil man that he's gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I, can I just, before, just before we close, um, yep. Sharon, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, there's so many opportunities. And one of the opportunities, I think, is like our daughter said to us, she's been given the job as manager of her daughter's sports team rugby team right and she was petrified i don't know anything about managing a sports team and i'm sitting here thinking how many mums in new zealand and australia have been thrown into that role and where is the place they go to learn to be the manager of a sports team right it's huge it's mm -hmm. unbelievably huge the yeah. opportunity. and um so i'll probably get off here and, and ring her up and say have I got the idea for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, you know, like if you think about it, it's it's dads who have been asked to coach and they come home and they can't sleep and they think, how am I going to coach these kids? I don't know <laughs> the first thing about it. That's why I asked you, who coaches the coaches? Coaches, yeah, exactly. Coaches the managers. Yeah. yeah. So find that person who can help you through. So I always say a good coach is somebody who can ask amazing questions, you yeah? know? Yeah. So you just need someone uh, there for you asking you the questions. What would you do? Because you want to teach them to be resourceful, not reliant, right? So coaching is about resourcefulness, not reliance. And so having someone around her to go ask her the, the, the amazing questions so she can be a great uh, manager and coach that team. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we underestimate what we bring, uh, you know, to a new environment. When I first started franchising, I kept saying to myself, I know nothing about franchising. I know nothing about franchising. And then one day, you know, I sort of, you know, slapped myself around and went, well, hang on, no business. And franchising is small business, really. And so I thought, well, what can I bring from my real estate businesses into franchising? What do I know? What what do I already have expertise in? What, what, what life experiences do I already have? And they duplicate in every industry. Because I know I can be in any industry. I'm just duplicating my experience and expertise. They're the same, same. People are people. You're dealing with people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can go on all morning. <laughs> <laughs> And just, I just want to add, uh, tell Anne, uh, in the US, you may have heard of um, US ladies, uh, a brand called Drinkable Air. Um, so it's a machine that makes water out of air. It was in Fort La Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I own the Australian distribution rights to that. So that's one of my other companies that I own. Yeah. So I sell water machines. <laughs> but it's I, still saw, I saw one on Facebook yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's still people... Buying from people, though, even though it's a machine, I don't worry about the product. It's about those relationships. Who's the manufacturer of the, the uh, water machine out of air? Uh, the company's called Drinkable Air. It's in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. Because uh, yeah. I was working with Sharp, and I've worked with them for many years. They mm. uh, they tried to bring that product out to Australia, but it didn't take off in Australia. Mm. It actually make water out of out of the air. Yeah, so, yeah. You only need to plug it into electricity. It's about ten percent a uh, ten cents a liter. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll wind awesome. up uh, on this note, but happy for everyone to stay on. Um, seeing Dad's not here, 
I suppose it's over to me to do the uh, the swap creed. So if we're all ready, get yourselves ready in the sense of I'm alive, I'm well, I feel great. Sorry, Rodney, did you want to say something? No. All right. I'm just getting ready. ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just getting, I'm just getting ready. I'm, I'm well. Ready. And I, I feel great. 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 I'm alive. I'm well. I'm alive. 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 i am alive i something to come in, then I'm off to a meeting, but I'm happy to sit and still listen and learn. Thank you, Jeremy. Good choice. Excellent. See you next week. Oh, no, next month. Next month. <laughs> <laughs> and I will too. I've got another thing to get to. Okay, guys, I'll so go Happy too. 4th Bye. of July tomorrow. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Sharon, how can, we, how can we find you? Oh, she's gone. Oh, she's Do you know gone. how to find her? I mean, like the website or anything? Uh, if you have a look at the Swap Facebook page, you will see her information. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right. See you guys.